Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I wanted to talk to you about the mail order plant business or the online selling and then shipping plants to customers. I can talk about that from a customer point of view and from a seller point of view because I've done both. It's been a while since I've made a video on this topic a number of years and I've learned a lot since then about how to sell plants successfully online and ship them to customers. But there are some cautions that have to be thrown in here. Basically, this is a business that has some additional risks both on the buyer's end and on the seller's end that you have to try to surmount to make a good business of it. So let's talk about some of those buyer beware, seller beware, and precautions you can take with mail order plants. First thing I wanted to say is that mail order is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun here. There's some changes in the technology involved, but mail order has been around. I think there are some catalogs that date back to the 1730s. There was a big craze in orchids in the 1800s. And of course, Stark Brothers, the big US supplier of fruit trees and other trees has been around and in business doing essentially the same thing since 1816. So there's nothing brand new to this. Things may change a little bit in which plants are hot, which plants are not. And of course, with the advent of online selling and social media, as the technology has changed, but the mail order business has fundamentally faced the same challenges since those early days. Before diving into some of those risks and challenges of mail order shopping, let's talk about some of the advantages and why it remains such a compelling option. So for buyers, the main thing is that you get a greater assortment of plants at a wide range of pricing and sizing options. So if you are, for instance, in a colder climate, you can mail order from someplace in a favorable geographic region and have it arrive to you ready to plant at the time of year that you need it. And as I say, you get access to all of those rare plant sellers or people with specialty plants. So from a consumer point of view, this is great. And also you can shop from home, which is really great. From a seller's point of view, from a grower's point of view, it expands your market beyond your local geographic boundaries. So if I have, for instance, specialty roses that I'm growing, Growing, like this one here. I can stick it in a box and ship it off to somebody in Toronto or some place else in Canada. Uh, and that expands my market beyond just the local growers who might not be as interested in the specialty or old roses that I grow. So win-win, right? Both parties get access to each other through this medium of shipping the plants. Now let's talk about some of those risks because the main thing that people are concerned about usually when they talk about mail order is what am I going to get? You know, if you go to the garden center, you're going to be able to look at this plant. You're going to see the size of the pot. You're going to see how well it's rooted. Uh, you're going to have an idea of whether it's true to type just looking at the plant and you have the recourse of buying it or not buying it when you make that call right on the spot and you can obviously return to that local nursery if you have problems down the road that let's say it turned out to not be true to type and it flowered differently than you wanted it to. <clears throat> For every one of those considerations, when you're talking about a mail order supplier, you're relying on a written description, a photo, which all can be manipulated, and you're relying on your trust for that supplier. You don't see the plants, so you don't have an idea really of the size, and there's always a chance that when you get it in your hands, you're disappointed in the size or selection of the plant. Condition of the plant is a second concern because you're putting plants in the mail. Now seeds and bulbs are really relatively well suited to shipping like this, but when you're talking about dahlia tubers and they come in mushy, especially with the craze that people are spending on dahlia tubers these days, or if you're talking about plants that have been in a box, like actively growing plants that have been in a box for a week and now their leaves are looking yellow and stretched and etiolated, uh, those issues around condition have to do with how the supplier packages them and handles them and arranges shipping but also with external factors like weather during the time of shipping. So it's a lot of things that you as the buyer would have to trust in and trusting in the policy of those suppliers to handle it when things go wrong. The third thing that you might actually be concerned about is the issue of scamminess or let's say a supplier that gets in over their heads and can't offer what they're saying that they will. Um, particularly if you're paying up in front and you're order is well out in advance. Again, you, you're very used to buying things from Amazon and having it shipped to you and it arrives in a few days or maybe even up to a week or two in the future uh, if it's an item that they have to bring in. But when you're talking about plants, sometimes the lead times that we're talking about is they count the plants in November and sell them then and you don't see the shipping, particularly on roses for instance, until the spring. And then you have this trust issue of, okay, you know, I just put $300 in somebody's hands. How legit are they? Uh, how good are those plants that they did? And a lot of that, again, comes down to that trust that you have to have in that supplier. So from the 
buyer's point of view, and I'll talk about this more in a minute, it really does pay to do your research in advance and figure out how long has this person been in the business? What are their reviews like? Have they successfully done this for a number of seasons before? Have they changed ownership recently? All of those things can figure into the question of how big a bet do you want to make on this supplier? Now, granted, there is some recourse when it comes to your payment processors. If you've done it through Visa or PayPal or any of the other major payment processors, you do have some recourse, but the longer the time that they're asking for, and the more they kick that down the road, the less certain it becomes that you can get your money back. And if you get to that point where they've delayed you by shipping it, say they were going to say spring shipping, and now they're going to do fall shipping, or they're going to push you to the next year. At that point, you've become more like a creditor than a customer. And that's really not a situation that anybody wants to be in. Now I'm going to take those same concerns from the seller's point of view and say you have the exact same concerns, you're just on the opposite end of the transaction. So the point is that you have to be very, very careful about how you describe your plants. This is the rose that I sell here, but people are accustomed to seeing those big bare root roses sold out of California or Texas. And that's a that's a that's an expectation that I have to manage in advance. Every year when I make my offering, I have to put out a video and I kind of force people to watch it saying, this is what you're going to be getting and they're going to be six per box and this is the time that we're going to ship it and you have to select your shipping times carefully but be take it for granted from a seller's point of view that no matter how carefully you describe this in text at the checkout screen in the video that people some people are going to skip 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 and get to the end of that transaction and then they're going to get the plants and be disappointed or concerned by what they got so that's something you just have to take for granted from a selling point of view when it comes to those shipping and condition uh, concerns, yeah, you really have to be careful about when you're shipping the plants and how you're handling them, how long it's going to take to the get to the customer. And, you know, for instance, I'm going to tell you, I did a video with uh, Heirloom Roses last year, and one of the things they do down there is they strip off all the leaves. And I think in large part that has to do with reducing the risk that these land on the customer's door. They open the box and they find all these wilted and gross leaves on the inside of that package. Whether or not that affects the health of the plant or not there is a shock value when you open a package and it doesn't look great so by stripping off the leaves yeah maybe all you're seeing is the stems of the roses uh, but it does reduce the risk that they're going to look at it and make a, a serious customer complaint so it's something you have to manage uh, both from an actual plant health point of view but also from the perception point of view of the customer and I guess the third thing I'd say is you have to be super clear in your policies and communication and you know figure that out in advance what you're willing to do for customers what you're not willing to do for customers we ship it with a letter that says what they can expect how to handle the plants and what we're going to do if something doesn't come through and we expect our plants are going to thrive but there are things that happen on the way and there are things that happen in people's gardens and so you just have to negotiate that in advance and get it to the customer when it comes to that concern about whether our nursery is legitimate you can only assure customers so much and they have to rely on their own experience but what i would say is that if you're trying to build that confidence don't start big start small like we did four or five years ago we did probably a thousand dollars worth of mail order shipping and we just did it to a small number of customers we didn't over advertise it we had no countdown banners on our uh, on our website or any of those sketchy kind of things we weren't trying to push orders what we were trying to do is create a track record where we were able to grow these plants have them come through the winter okay we didn't count them until they were ready in February and the timeline on it is designed so that people place their orders in one month and then we're shipping them the next month or the month after that within a very limited window while they still have the recourse with their payment processors or they could cancel their orders or so on so it puts us in a position where I'm not asking them to put big risks on us uh, we both are having sort of what I would consider a balanced risk level and I should interject here that some shipping challenges are harder than others, like for instance, trying to get across an international border or even sometimes between different states. Your vendor should be aware of all the requirements that it takes to move from one state to another, and it varies sometimes by the plant. Seeds move pretty freely, but even between the United States and Canada, oftentimes you are required to have a phytosanitary certificate at minimum, sometimes even more than that, and some plants aren't even allowed to move at all. So again, your uh, supplier, your vendor should be very familiar with that. If you are a customer and you are in a different state or a different uh, nation than where you're trying to order the plants from, just check the fine print closely, see if they've paid attention to those international shipping requirements. And if they don't give you any assurances on that, then ask. That's something uh, worth doing before you lay out the money and they put it in the mail.
So just going to wrap up the topic now by saying I think there are some really hopeful signs now with the advent of Facebook particularly and the community groups that monitor how vendors are doing but even things like Dave's Garden or House or other forums where gardeners share information that you're able to keep track of how well the vendors and suppliers are doing at meeting the promises they make. Uh, I have to say that even though the industry has been doing mail order for what two three hundred years now uh, the I'm going to say the scamminess or the perception of scamminess has stuck with us that entire time. There's always been the possibility that buyers can can go and make the purchase and then get something they didn't expect or is wrong or not true to type and get burned on that transaction. So that's something that as mail order sellers, we have to try to overcome by being really super transparent with our policy. I really have to say that when it comes to plants that are at um, high levels of gardener passion I'm gonna say in this point those dahlias that are selling an auction for big big money but also roses in the past few years there are some varieties that have been hard to get and what it does is it sort of gets people out of thinking and gets them into sort of panic mode how can I find this how can I get that and then they're not thinking clearly uh, from from the industry point of view I don't think that's good for confidence over the long term and certainly having sellers that come in and try to profiteer off of that uh, is a bad is bad news for everyone so from a consumer point of view be careful who you're dealing with check the forums don't accept any terms that are longer term than you're comfortable with and certainly if it's a new seller a, a, a brand new or just sold seller uh, vendor of plants uh, don't risk any more than you'd be willing to lose I guess is my point consider it a bit of a gamble to figure out whether that person is worth dealing with but better yet deal with people who have better reputations and go from there hope you found this to be an interesting discussion please go ahead and drop any of your comments down into the comments of the video and I'll see what I can do to help